Hyundai Ioniq Autonomous Ride Review We get taken for a ride around the streets of Las Vegas by an autonomous Hyundai Ioniq. Hyundai's Ioniq has already blazed a significant trail, being engineered from the outset to accommodate hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and full EVTEC the first car in the world to do so. But now the Korean company has added another significant string to its belt, endowing it with autonomous capabilities as the self-driving revolution gathers steam. Auto Express was given an opportunity to sample this latest version of the High Pioneer and where better to do so than on one of the most famous roads in the world, the Las Vegas Strip, and in the streets around the city's convention center, where the Consumer Electronics Show Tech Fest is an annual highlight in January. While we weren't actually in charge of the Ionic it drove itself after all our experience gave a great insight into where Hyundai is heading. And for reassurance, there was Chief Autonomous Engineer Ji Hai Yong Han in the driver's seat to intervene had the need arisen. Externally, the autonomous model looks like any other Ionic there are no external obtrusions bolted on the roof or the body that are obviously monitoring surroundings. Autonomous decals made clear to other road users was what this Ionic was all about, and if you look closely at the number plate you'll see the letters O, which signify an autonomous car in Nevada. But the key tech is all cleverly hidden and integrated into the bodywork. There are 10 sensors in total, with 4 cameras mounted at the top of the windscreen joined by 3 radar and 3 lidar sensors around the car. The camera's roles are straightforward to monitor other traffic and objects, while a third checks traffic lights to see if they are red, amber or green. The fourth looks out for pedestrians and is also a lane departure warning camera. Behind the grille and in the bumper are a combination of radar and lidar units, which, Hyundai says, gives the Ionic full 360 degree coverage. Inside, again, it's pretty much business as usual, with a couple of key differences. There's a noticeable emergency stop button on the center console, which does little to placate the nerves of anyone doubtful of the autonomous Ionic's capabilities. Thankfully, ours wasn't required. There's also a new 7-inch monitor mounted on the top of the dash which feeds back info to the engineers and driver on what the car is doing. This is an idea of what a consumer-facing display might look like, and is intended as a trust builder, Case and Grover, Senior Technical Manager, Vehicle Technology Planning, Hyundai Motor America, told us, acknowledging the reservations some potential customers have about this tech. It displays road signals ahead and possible obstacles like oncoming pedestrians. And in the rear are two LCD screens mounted to the seat backs. The one on the left shows what the traffic light camera sees, the one on the right broadcasts what the LiDAR sensors detect on the road curbs and other objects etc. The most remarkable thing about traveling in such a high model as this is just how wholly unremarkable it is. Our three-mile trip around Las Vegas was incident-free and uneventful. Indeed, the best words to describe the INX progress would be considered and cautious a far cry, for example, from the aggressive taxi driver who ferried Auto Express from the city's Macaron Airport to our hotel, cutting up other road users and generally attracting a host of negative attention. Of course, eliminating this potential for human error is a key selling point of autonomous cars. The INX progress was pretty serene. We were driven out of a parking lot at the city's Westgate Hotel manually by Ji Hai Yong Han before the pre-programmed route started. It blended a mixture of 25 miles per hour and 45 miles per hour limit roads, with the Ionic hybrid comfortably cruising at the maximum on both, accelerating smoothly and braking sensibly. There was no need for MR Han to intervene, and it was noticeable, for example, how the Ionic was programmed to keep a very safe distance from cars in front at junctions. This, though, can be altered depending on who has programmed the car. On two occasions the car detected it was safe to turn right at a red light, as per us road regulations, and did so with no problem. However it was turning right on another occasion that it showed its only real foible, with the steering wheel looking a little jerky and the path round the curve that it followed not the most obvious one. On the whole, though, it was an impressive, 
spectacularly normal performance if you can get your head round the fact that the steering wheel is moving on its own, as on all autonomous cars. So how soon can we expect to see this level of autonomy on a model in the showroom? Well, according to Ji Hai Yong Han the tech is production ready already Hyundai needs to wait for customer demand, infrastructure, and insurers to catch up. But bosses say a fully autonomous Hyundai using the kind of technology we saw is feasible by 2030. There are also technical issues to resolve, too. Would, for example, a fully autonomous car be restricted to the speed limit by regulations, or would it be up to the customer to decide? More detailed mapping will have to be developed, too and better road markings than the pretty poor ones we encountered on our Vegas test route would be desirable. There's also the issue of cost, full autonomy on a family-oriented vehicle such as the Ionic could add a fair amount to the price, although Hyundai won't talk figures. It is clear, though, that this most ambitious of brands is taking the tech extremely seriously. It's spent three months on Las Vegas roads preparing this Ionic and testing a Tucson 2 and our demo showed that the time has been well spent. The company is the first manufacturer to test level 4 autonomy in real-world conditions on public roads and it's clear that when the move to driverless models starts in earnest, it is well placed to capitalize.